Dearly beloved, praise God and uh, welcome to this program, the program Finding God. And we have been in it and we shall continue being in it because that is our duty. It's a bounded duty that God has given us to find him. And remember what we've always been saying, that we find him because he first found us. We love him because he first loved us. And so we have continued on with the life of the men and the women that Jesus Christ walked along with in ministry. And so that these people called the disciples and apostles later on were the people that Jesus handed over the responsibility, the ministry to go and continue uh, searching and preaching and, you know, reaching everywhere as it is stated in Matthew 28, 19. And so we shall continue with finding God in every situation, finding God in every circumstance, finding God in everything that actually that could be in. And so we continue with our series. And this time, I want us to give a thought about Jesus' ministry among the 12, but he narrows down a little bit to the three. There were some people whom he called the inner circle. And so Jesus, first of all, had 12 disciples. But among the 12, we shall discover that he had those that were closer, that stuck closer with him. And so it is what we have called be a disciple friend of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so among the 12, we have these names. In Matthew chapter 10, verses 2 to 4, and I just want to hurry through their names here, that now the names of the 12 apostles are these. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Lebeus, whose surname was Theodos, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. You know, we have read about these names before, and shall continue reading them, because these were the 12 men that Jesus Christ was with. And later on, he delegated his responsibility, he delegated his duty, preaching and reaching out to the many in order to find God in their situations. And now, among these 12, Jesus had number three. He had three people. And now these three men were the ones that stuck closely with them, with him. And we shall see um, times when they were so close, times when they sat with him, times when they cried with him, times when he prayed, they prayed with him. And so these three composed of the following, Peter, who is Simon, of course, James and John. The three were the men that were the, what we call the inner circle, the people that were so close to him at every situation that he was in. And so on several occasions, Jesus had these people closer with him. And the first occasion I just want to mention is that when there was a time when he healed certain, he healed certain people, he raised some dead people, and sometimes you could not permit another person to go there with him apart from the three. And this has a lesson for us. And this is in Luke chapter 8, verse 51, when Jesus healed or raised a, a, a daughter to someone called Jairus. The Bible said that he permitted nobody else to go with him in there apart from the three. And this is Luke chapter 8, verse 51. And the Bible says that when he came into the house, Remember Jairus came to Jesus and pleaded, Lord, my daughter is not well. And shortly the daughter passed on. And along the way, there came a woman who had suffered with hemorrhage 12 years. And this is called a double miracle. But the point that we're making here is in Luke chapter 8, verse 51, that when Jesus came into the house, he permitted no one to go in except Peter, James, and John, and the father and the mother of the girl. And these were witnesses of certain inner things. And so Jesus was a man for everyone. 
but he teaches us something that actually there's, there are certain times when we need to have people that are closer to us that will keep record of certain inner things that will be disseminated to the world. And now here the three were the ones that went in and I know the ones who, came, who gave the story about what Jesus did in the house because he kept, he reached there and told them do not weep. He reached there that she's not dead but he's sleeping and these words were spoken to the father and the mother of the child, of the dead child. And the witnesses to this were the three. Not all the other nine, not all the other multitudes, but the three were witnesses to this. Very, very important, very key, very inner things. And so this teaches us greatly that Jesus was here on earth and he gives us an example that we can be in our dealings, but there should be, not everybody will stick closer to you. Not everybody will be one that will keep secrets with you. And so you need somebody. And Jesus shows us that there were these three men that were sticking closer with him. And we shall see the next thing that actually he does in Mark chapter 9 verse 2. The Bible does mention another scenario where he goes with the three. And this is the mountain of transfiguration. When our Lord Jesus Christ was transfigured, he changed his appearance. And the people that witnessed were these three. And they were able to tell the story. And so, friends, we need someone who will tell the story after we have left. And not everybody will tell the story um, accurately. You need someone who will tell the story in its accuracy. And these three show us something here. And so Jesus went to goes to the mountain, the mountain transfiguration. And the Bible says that now after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John. And he led them up on the mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And so the story of transfiguration is told by nobody, by these three. The witnesses, something that actually that happened, and our Lord Jesus Christ did it on purpose, that these men would come back and tell the story. And so I come to think that actually Jesus had those trusted. Not everyone, yes, he had all the 12 trusted, but he had some core team that he would work with. And so these three were led up the mountain and he was transfigured before them. Transfiguration means that after Jesus, the appearance changed and the glory of God was shining upon him. This is when there was confirmation that Jesus is the son of God because the Bible says that could have been opened and this is, uh, the voice came and he declared Jesus, this is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. And so this is a very, very critical uh, information that we needed and these three men were the ones that were able to tell that this happened on the mountain of transfiguration so they witnessed several things and when we read mark chapter 3 chapter 13 verse 3 now the very people that okay they were keeping closer with jesus christ when we read matthew chapter 26 there are the people that were with him in the garden of gethsemane you remember during the times of suffering and they were the ones actually jesus came and because they were there, listen to me, because they were men, these men were there, Jesus comes and tells them when they were sleeping, they were close but sleeping, you know? And of course, someone would say, mm, but they were close, but they were sleeping. But listen, they were there. And Jesus makes a statement to them and tells them, hey, wake up, pray that you may not fall into temptation. Now, who knows? Maybe we would not have had that statement if these men were not there. But they were there. So I said so there are times when you can be there, maybe even sleeping, but you give confidence to someone. And even if you are not saying anything, but sometimes you give confidence to someone. And Jesus stands and walks. And he's with these three men. Now, in their weaknesses, in their flaws, in their limitations, but he needed them. And this is the point that I come to share with you today. That Jesus noticed them to be the pillars of the church. And Peter, of course, the Roman Catholic Church takes him as the first pope. And now, in the church where we belong, we say St. Peter's Day. And this St. Peter's Day is the day, of course, Father's Union celebrating. And we say, yes, the rock. And so Jesus, with um, seeing this, he met these three and made them into pillars of the church. Now, there will always be a core team in our dealings with other people. Even in our human dealings, at our workplaces, in the home. Of course, you may be born nine, you may be born ten, you may be born 
how many? But the, not everyone will be thinking the same. And so Jesus shows us something that they that develop some trust and so that actually there will be a point of responsibility. There will be people that will carry on even when others have run away, even when others have fallen off. But this one is to stick with you. And they will carry on your dream. And so these three men did that. So in the inner circle, we have to play a key role in the establishment of the church. Yes, the other nine also did that. But Jesus shows us something here in these three. Now the three were consistently with the Lord Jesus Christ. He singled them out and they were given unique opportunities to serve. And they were available most of the time. And so in your ministry, even in your family, even wherever you are, you need a core team to work with the people that will advance your dream, that will carry on the story that you want them to, to carry on. So the three, the Bible talks about them as men that were, and they were the people that they were uneducated. Remember, they were fishermen from Galilee and um, they lacked formal information. And I just remembered something in, in Acts chapter 4 that when they were preaching at one moment, these men, Peter and, and his colleagues, in Acts chapter 4, the people exclaimed that these people were uneducated, but they were so bold in their message. And Jesus had empowered them. Jesus had, you know, put a seed in them. And in 4 verse 13, the Bible says that now, when they saw the boldness of Peter, remember the Peter they were talking about here, and John, and perceived that they were uneducated a lot and untrained men, the people marveled, remember? And they realized that they had been with Jesus Christ. Now, being with Jesus Christ alone, now I just want to appeal to us that let us keep close. Let us keep in touch. These uneducated people, these illiterate men, these untrained ones, they went and preached and this lot were marveled at them. And so friends, the thing that I desire now to implore you upon is, you may have so many friends, you may have so many relatives, you may have so many, but having a people that will stick closer with you is the point that I'm making. And so that someone will carry on with your dream. And now these men carried on. And remember that actually the first part of the book of Acts of the Apostles is called Petrine section. Petrine because Peter was the core. Peter was at the center. Peter was the rock, remember, the rock on which Christ said that I will build my church. And therefore I pray for you that in this, our generation, you could be one of them that you'll hold it closer. And remember at the beginning I did mention that be a disciple friend of our Lord Jesus Christ. Others may fall off. Now you may say directly Peter followed on, but later on he denied him three times. But remember, I think he was much better off. It was much better for him to be there to deny him when he was looking than those that have had run away. But he stuck there and the Bible says that actually after the cock crowed, Peter cried. He cried the tears. Yes, now, and many of us, and all of us fall all the time. All of us deny the Lord all the time. All of us do things that demoralize him all the time. But the point they were making is, stick there. Despite your flaws, despite your sickness, your, your weaknesses, he still desires you to be closer with him. Now, I just want to, make, to end with two things. One, the Bible in the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 24, the Bible says that there's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Now, this is a message that I derive here. These three men were friends that stuck closer than the brothers. And Jesus had relatives, but these three stuck with him. In Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 24, the Bible says that um, a brother, that... Um, um, that a man can have friends, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Now you need somebody. The other time I was talking about a mentor, and you need somebody whom you keep with. And there are some people who specialize in making enemies all the time. But I want to ask you that specialize in making friends who will stick closer with you. 
and I'm, I'm purposing even now that I have to make friends that will stick closer with me. Point number two, the point the Bible talks about in Luke chapter 16, verse 9. <laughs> Jesus makes a statement that many people have thought about and has remained a huge statement. I'm just finishing this here. Luke 16, 9, and the Bible, Jesus was giving a story about the mammona of the earth here. And he says, I say to you, make friends for yourselves by unrighteous mammon, that when you fall, they may receive you into an everlasting home. Now, Jesus is saying, make friends. There are some people who, like I've already said, who specialize in making enemies all the time, but make a friend that will stick closer. And using the resources that you have, your education that you have acquired, your church that you, that you pray in, your choir talents that you use, your Bible study, I mean, gatherings, make friends. And those are the, the treasures that we have. And so, friends, Jesus had the three men. But we're talking about the life of the disciples. It has been a time of a series of them, but now this one, the three were closer in the Garden of Gethsemane, at Transfiguration, at Jairus' home. There were certain facts that we received from them and they teach us a lot. But I want to ask you, I want to ask you, make friends, because friends stick closer. Peter denied him, but he was closer there. And later on, there are the pillars that we have, we have kept in our mind and that we follow suit that the church continues being established. So may you continue finding God even among the people that you stay with, that you work with, that you live with. And there are those who will stick with you. And may God bless us and use us during this time as we continue thinking about the life of the apostles and the disciples being learners, authority delegated, power delegated, preaching delegated to us. And may God bless you and watch over you. And may he use me also as one of his servants, and may he continue using you as one of your servants. Be a disciple friend of our Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore I pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, be blessed and keep there, 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 there. That the Lord needs you to continue loving and serving him in this generation. Amen. <music>